meeting. I'm, I'm Paulo Santiago and the head of the Policy Advice and Implementation Division in the OECD's Director for Education and Skills. And it's a pleasure to welcome you to this uh, meeting. Uh, but before we start, I would like to ask all participants who are not presenting or speaking to please keep your cameras and microphones switched off. This will ensure the visibility of, of the presenters themselves. You can ask questions in the chat function, which will be monitored by my colleagues and who will put your questions to the presenters. Also, I'd like to draw your attention to the fact that the plenary sessions of this meeting will be recorded. So the event, which is organized by the Hungarian Ministry for Innovation and Technology with support from the OECD, is part of the European Commission funded project ensuring quality digital higher education in Hungary and builds upon the project supporting the digital transformation of higher education in Hungary, which was completed by the OECD in November of last year and was also funded by the European Commission. As part of this last project, the OECD provided recommendations to Hungary on how to strengthen the digital transformation of higher education. And one of these included a recommendation to review the existing accreditation and quality assurance practices, which is precisely the focus of the current project. After the official start of the project in November last year, today's event is the last in a series of research and stakeholder consultation activities carried out by the OECD higher education policy team over the past six months and aimed at informing or understanding of the Hungarian quality assurance landscape for higher education and any existing challenges or barriers for ensuring the quality of digital higher education. The main purpose of today's event is therefore for us to learn more about the practices and key challenges facing higher education institutions in Hungary for expanding and assuring the quality of their digital course offer by inviting all participants present today to share best practices with respect to managing and supporting quality digital higher education and discuss how public policies and external quality assurance can support the offer of quality digital higher education by Hungarian higher education institutions. Throughout this event, we'll be able to listen to presentations and discussions uh, between experts from seven higher education institutions, representing a range of different training profiles and perspectives. Uh, Budapest Metropolitan University of Applied Sciences, the University of Debrecen, Karoli Gaspar, University of the Reformed Church, Corvinus University, the University of Zeged, Utvers Loran University, and Semmelweis University. We'll also listen to breakout session discussions uh, between a sample of students, instructors, instructors, and professional staff from several higher education institutions and moderated by colleagues from the OECD higher education policy team. And then uh, to conclude, we'll also have reflections from national level higher education stakeholders in Hungary on now they are supporting higher education institutions to strengthen the quality of their digital provision. This includes representatives from the Hungarian Accreditation Committee, the Ministry for Innovation and Technology, the National Union of Students and the Hungarian Rectors Conference. So before ending over to Francois, who will provide more details on the state of play of the project, the purpose and next steps plan after today's event, I would like to invite colleagues from Hungary and the European Commission to make some brief opening remarks. So first, I would like to give the floor to Dr. Balas Anko, Deputy State Secretary for Higher Education at the Hungarian Ministry for uh, Innovation and Technology. So Dr. Anko, you have the floor. Thank you and good morning for everybody. Dear Excellencies, dear colleagues from the Hungarian Higher Education Institution, we reached the next step of development of Hungarian higher education, digital education. Digital transformation, innovation, research, sustainable development, they have been the most highlighted topics for several years that the discussion and thinking are about. Digital transformation is a comprehensive social change that creates additional opportunities to develop the economy and encourages further advances in the labor market. 
the government of Hungary has realized the significance of its transformation and intend to prepare its citizens for it. The development of digital ecosystem should be carried out with great care. The implementing relation from planning to final evolution should be inclusive with all its factors, such as digital infrastructure, digital economy, e-government, and digital skills development. We consider it very important to improve the digital readiness of the higher education system and to continue to support development measures for digitalization. The government's digital education strategy and the shifting of gears in the higher education midterm policy strategy established valuable objectives and actions to contribute the digitalization of the national higher education system. However, these strategies need to be complemented in two main ways. First, policy changes need to remove barriers to digitalization in higher education. They also need to incentivize the substantial change in institutional and individual practices required for digital practices to take root in Hungarian higher education system and to contribute to enhance higher education performance. Secondly, a framework to measure the digitalization of higher education needs to be established to monitor progress and identify areas for improvement and investment and needs to define guidelines for quality assurance in digital higher education. We have just finished the work together in the framework of supporting the digital transformation of higher education in Hungary project that was warmly welcomed from all stakeholders on, and contributors of the development and the Ministry for Innovation and Technology, the OECD and the European Commission's DG reform and all partners marked as an outstanding collaborative work. Building on this work, the project Ensuring Quality Digital Higher Education in Hungary was launched in November 2021 and will conclude in March 2023. The project will analyze Hungary's quality assurance system and the possible sets of ensuring quality digital higher education. The project will support policymaking in adoption of new quality standards and will make recommendations for a revised external quality assurance framework, as well as for the development of new external and internal quality assurance services and support the mechanism to help institutions deliver quality digital higher education. The aim and the focus of today's national roundtable is to engage Hungarian higher education institution in the joint development of quality standard and policy options to ensure quality digital higher education in Hungary. It is important to know how Hungarian higher education institution can contribute to the quality of digital higher education, how and what role can the Hungarian higher education accreditation commission play in the process and how can we as policymaker support this process. We have already taken several important steps and it is a sign of our commitment that we are one of the EU member states that supports universities and innovation most intensively with almost 2% of our GDP. In this context, a completely new funding structure has been established in the last two years with 21 model changing and 16 church funding institutions. We have restructured the higher education funding system, laying the foundation for a predictable funding system based on quality and performance with 30, 40, 50 percent of resources dependent on quality parameters. Under the renewed structure, we have increased the funding for our universities and under the renewed structure by a factor of 2.5, so we will provide nearly 2,000 billion Hungarian foreigns of over the next six years. Within the new structure and the increased funding framework, our task now is to transform the structure of training within the framework of the sectoral modernization of higher education training in order to make training more practical, flexible, labor market focused, and to accelerate the start and the completion of vocational training. 
digitalization and quality assurance in digital higher education play very important role in this. We are continuing to work on this way and I hope that all partners, institutions will support our efforts. I wish you a successful meeting for today. Thank you for your kind attention. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Henko. And next, I would like to invite uh, Mrs. Valeria Seppe, President of the Hungarian Accreditation Committee. Uh, so please, Mrs. Seppe, the floor is yours. Thank you very much, Chair. On behalf of the Hungarian Accreditation Committee, I cordially welcome the project participants of the Digital Quality Assurance Program. The Ministry of Innovation and Technology, now Ministry of Culture and Education, the European Commission's Directorate for Structural Reform Support, the OECD's Policy Advice and Implementation Division, at the Directorate for Education and Skills. I warmly welcome all the participants of the National Roundtable, uh, the presenters, experts, stakeholders. My special thanks uh, go to the participants from higher education institutions who accepted the invitation of o OECD for interviews, uh, the program we were working uh, uh, together. It is a pleasure to our agency, the Hungarian Accreditation Committee, the Hungarian abbreviation of our name is MAB, um, that the project reached its first main goals, that is to have a clear view on the uh, QA practices and accreditation possibilities in the Hungarian higher education undergoing an unprecedented modernization. One of the wonders of living organisms is their adaptive behavior, providing an effective change in critical and crisis situations. The COVID-19 pandemic led to crisis situations and critical solutions. Here with a positive result, the acceleration of digital transformation of higher education in Hungary. Our higher education institutions have proven that they act as living organisms as used to and provided the best examples of adaptability. Digitization, which had already started years ago as a priority government program, has reached a higher level new methods, reorganized curricula, uh, and different programs have emerged. The role of digital platforms became accepted. The digitally available information started to play an imminent role in teaching and learning. New systems for learning, teaching have emerged. New programs, new structures, new types of organizations needed uh, by different tasks. And this is a goal for a better management and a better quality assurance, um, uh, providing uh, new systems and um, look at the accreditation evaluation possibilities. It means that uh, in uh, 2021, was timely to start focusing on the further steps so that the idea to have data on how far we got with supporting the QA policy standards, practice, and how to implement received a general support. The only QA agency of Hungary can implement the advanced methods and provide support to the higher education institutions in application. The main task is to have a clear view how far we got, where we want to go, and how we can manage it. The aim is to improve the digital QA with the hope that beneficiaries of the project um, results are, who are they? The prime stakeholders or students being in center of all quality assurance standards in the European higher education area. I hope they will enjoy 
a modern support system, which is digital, digital so far as it needed, well organized and supports the goal, the main goals of the policymakers to have a modernized, flexible, barrier free higher education in Hungary. I wish all of us a successful event and hope we can use by the end of the project in practice what we learned today and in the following months of the project. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Mrs. Uh, Xepe. Uh, now I'd like to give the floor to Mrs. Agota Kovacs, uh, Policy Officer at the European Commission's Director General for Structural Reform Support. Uh, please, Agota, you have the floor. Thank you very much. Good morning to everybody. I would also like to welcome all participants in this important national roundtable discussion on behalf of the European Commission, its Directorate General for Structural Reform Support. It is a great pleasure for me to make an introduction in a dual role, being the policy officer, managing the two successive projects we support, and as country coordinator responsible for our relations with Hungary in DG reform. The technical support program is a powerful tool that assists member states in designing and implementing reforms prioritized for sustainable growth. We are a demand-driven instrument, having supported many reform projects in Hungary so far, facilitating transformative changes in key sectors. Digitalization remains a major challenge that we faced and will continue to face together, as Hungary has requested our support to transform its higher education system. This project is a follow-up to a previous initiative that we supported with expertise and funding from the Structural Reform Support Programme, kickstarting a reform in, a in digitalizing the Hungarian higher education system. We are now in a very important phase of this reform effort, having provided a policy outlook for the digital transformation process and an important toolbox to manage the reform, turning the focus now on quality assuring higher education. We were happy to bring on board the OECD to continue to provide the technical assistance requested by Hungary, and we will jointly accompany Hungary in navigating the first phase of this long-term and systemic challenge. I would like to thank the Hungarian national authorities and also to your wonderful group of policymakers and practitioners for the support in implementing this innovative project that builds on the momentum and takes the reform effort further. Today, we can take stock together with all of you on the challenges of for the future, brainstorming together on the possible ways of addressing these. I can assure you that for us in DG reform, the process is as important as the outcome in managing transformative changes. For their success and sustainability, your active participation remains crucial. Let me, conclude you, let me conclude by wishing you a great discussion for today, counting on your engagement in this joint DG reform OECD project, uh, not only today, but also in the even more important period to come, when you will need to walk along the jointly chosen avenues to ensure quality assurance in digital higher education in Hungary. Please do not hesitate to come forward with questions or comments. I will be at your disposal at this roundtable and also in the upcoming project activities, notably the next event, an international seminar scheduled for June 14. Thank you for your attention and I wish you a good discussion. Thank you very much, Agota. Uh, real pleasure for the OECD to be together with you in this tripartite uh, project. And thank you very much for all the introductory statements this morning. I would now like to give the floor to Francoise Taring, who is very much on the side of the OECD, the, the mastermind of, of the project on our side, and he will provide further details on the state of play of the project and the purpose of today's event. So I wish you all a very fruitful meeting. Look forward to the presentations and outcomes from the group discussions, and would like to invite everyone to share any questions or comments in the chat function. Thank you very much. Uh, so, Francois, the floor is yours. Thank you very much, uh, Paolo, and uh, also uh, from me, a uh, warm welcome and thanks to everybody who is present here today, and also for uh, all the support, uh, inputs, and, ad and advice and collaboration that you've provided uh, to us, uh, the OECD higher education policy team, over the past 
uh, yeah, six months uh, of this project. So as, as mentioned by Paolo a bit earlier, um, we've already worked very intensively together um, with you know, several of you that are here uh, today. You've taken part in interviews with us. We have carried out um, site visits, but virtually uh, to a range of, of, of institutions in Hungary. And we have conducted a wide range of desk research uh, supported by both national and international um, experts on, on the one hand, the quality assurance landscape in Hungary, and as well uh, on how uh, quality assurance of digital higher education uh, is being carried out by quality assurance agencies and higher education institutions across the OECD, so internationally more broadly. So today it really is an opportunity um, uh, for all of us, I think, first opportunity to come together and exchange best practices uh, and ideas with each other on how um, institutions and uh, uh, the quality assurance agency and ministry can, can support high quality digital uh, education in Hungary. So it's really uh, an opportunity. So we invite you to really uh, share and discuss any ideas um, and suggestions that you have, um, because this will be very important inputs uh, for our ongoing work. And I would also like to highlight that this is really sort of the beginning of a, a wider process of peer learning that we would like to engage in with all of you. Um, so after this event on the 14th of June, um, you know, because now we're looking at you know, sharing practice inside Hungary, so what is happening inside uh, your contexts and in your system really. On the 14th of June, we would like to open up more broadly and, and look together with you at what is happening uh, internationally. So during that event to which uh, several of you will also be invited, um, we will uh, hear from a range of international experts, quality assurance agencies and institutions on how they are managing uh, the quality of digital, uh, digital programs. Um, and finally, after that event, uh, there will be an opportunity for all of us to come together again and then reflect on, well, okay, what, what can we learn from these international examples of best practice and how are they relevant for uh, your contexts and your system? So I will, I will stop here and I would really like to uh, start handing over the floor to you uh, because we are here really to listen to you and your experience um, and listen to the first presentations. So. Uh, in the first session, um, we would like to, we're going to look a little bit more at um, Budapest Metropolitan University, represented by um, Dr. Istvan uh, Vilmos Kovac, and at Debrecen University, represented by Dr. Elek Barta, um, and how they are um, really managing the quality of their uh, digital courses and uh, programs. So, um, what I propose is that we do, we will or do the two presentations, which will take around 10 minutes uh, for each of the presenters. And after that, we will pose a couple of questions uh, to each of the presenters. So um, I would like to start by handing over to, um, to Istvan, please. Uh, we look forward to your presentation. <clears throat> yes, do you hear me? Uh, good morning, yes. everyone. Uh, I'm really uh, glad to uh, put our experience into an international uh, context while also having the great opportunity to meet with the domestic colleagues and exchange uh, our experience. And uh, I think uh, it is a very complex issue. So in 10 minutes, we can only address uh, some of the key features uh, of uh, uh, the quality of digital and online education. A few conditions that uh, had uh, a tremendous impact on uh, at the beginning of the uh, lockdown when we had to change uh, in uh, in our institution in 24 hours uh, the, the metropolitan university is the largest hungarian private university with two decades of tradition uh, in innovation in learning and teaching and also preparing students for adaptive labor market skills as well as life skills Therefore, the learning and teaching context was quite strong and uh, uh, the presence of technology had a very new uh, dimension with, with the domestic, uh, the, the home uh, conditions uh, that we all faced uh, uh, during the last two years. And, uh, and uh, everybody had to uh, 
rely on the prior experience they had. And uh, that's why we had to face uh, the diversity of capabilities and uh, all of the measures within the institution had to respond to uh, diversity. Um, uh, the, the learning and teaching uh, traditions meant to translate uh, things uh, to the online environment that have been important in face-to-face uh, -face education. However, the speed and the necessary evolution time uh, was in, in big, big contradiction and an ongoing high level of tension uh, were uh, not only in, in the smaller community of the university, but also uh, in ourselves as individuals, because um, uh, we had to manage a, a really uh, a robust uh, uh, series of, of, of new technical and uh, methodological uh, uh, challenges. Close monitoring was, was one of the, the quality related issues that we identified uh, beyond the conceptualization of the opportunity, because uh, uh, we can only have responsive measures if we clearly recognize uh, the needs of the colleagues or the smaller uh, uh, units of teaching and learning related to specific disciplinary or subject areas. Uh, some success features that I like to, to um, uh, highlight is that, that many of our colleagues had to shift from uh, uh, feeling pain uh, to leave behind uh, the face-to-face -face education and looking at the opportunity that uh, was uh, uh, possible to identify. Uh, so the, a, a positive uh, psychological uh, status or uh, uh, precondition uh, was important. It's, it's, it's not possible to provide for everyone, but, but emphasizing uh, the, the great paradigmatic shift or uh, uh, new uh, uh, impetus for, for a long uh, lasting uh, uh, digital challenge behind us. The, the second is that I already mentioned the the learning and teaching principles. Uh, for example, I'd like to um, highlight the importance of keeping participants or students active during the digital learning process was one of the challenges that we uh, uh, didn't want to give up. Uh, celebrate and rely on uh, pioneers. So we all know that our, we are surrounded by great teachers and students who are uh, really advanced uh, uh, in uh, applying digital uh, tools and, uh, and uh, methodologies, uh, they had to have uh, uh, an important role in distributing knowledge and experience. And we also had to keep in mind that many of our students and colleagues didn't feel comfortable in the environment uh, for them uh, we had to take uh, uh, special initiatives and gestures. This slide is not to, to, to frighten you, but uh, simply demonstrates that uh, we, in Metropolitan University, uh, we uh, mapped the, the wide range of opportunities that uh, can uh, be considered as, as digital improvement or enhancement of the educational provision. We started from the traditional classroom work uh, not not at the beginning of the pandemic, uh, but uh, but uh, much much uh, before that, uh, and uh, we don't know whether we should arrive at, 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 uh, to a full e-learning environment ever. But still, as an option uh, in front of us, still can enrich the considerations on learning and teaching. Uh, I'm not speaking about the hybrid challenge, that everybody who uh, tried it uh, learned that it's a tremendously difficult uh, uh, technique. Uh, we uh, had to uh, put into center the, some of the standard the standardization uh, uh, milestones or uh, starting points. Uh, the, the learning management system, uh, in our case, the co space. Uh, had much, much uh, more uh, or higher importance uh, than ever. So that was uh, one of the starting points that we had to stricter expect from our colleagues. Uh, 
the second is that the most visited uh, uh, channels of learning, fast learning, uh, uh, were highlighted in order to get access quickly uh, to the to the knowledge and skills uh, to at least run a class uh, with with uh, uh, using Zoom or Teams or WebEx, Google Mate, and uh, and these kind of uh, approaches. And uh, we are proud that many of our tutorials were used uh, countrywide. Uh, it's not an easy task, but we uh, rather intensified regular class visits of external uh, uh, advisors or uh, uh, helpers of uh, uh, the university. It helped us to learn the technical difficulties, consult with our colleagues uh, what should be or could be improved, and, uh, and also collecting feedbacks from their uh, difficulties. Uh, we also uh, adjusted the satisfaction of our students with the overall uh, educational experience, the student journey in our university, and we had to recognize some modest uh, decline, but that was a very important inspiration to improve uh, in each uh, channel of uh, work. As a student feedback system, there is a struggle in most uh, Hungarian higher education institutions to raise the level of uh, uh, feedback givers uh, and also to sustain the, the uh, collected feedbacks and have uh, proper responses. We intensify these activities. Uh, the teachers club, a regular opportunity at the beginning was very important to exchange uh, good ideas, progressive methodologies, uh, but we had to recognize that uh, one event can hardly change the, the main uh, attitudes or practices. Therefore, we also generated the mentoring system. Now we are running, for example, an extensive uh, 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 multi-level uh, uh, support system to deepen the use of Zoom because we, we recognize that only a small fraction of the opportunities of, of the Zoom environment is exploited by, by uh, uh, our colleagues. Uh, we, as Saged, we uh, uh, had a, a very uh, fruitful cooperation with Coursera, uh, and uh, we involved the, the asynchronous uh, contents, not only from freely available uh, from the YouTube and the internet, but also with the structured and, uh, and uh, worldwide uh, known uh, platform of MOOCs, Massive Online Open Courses. And uh, what was really a, a brave exercise, and it was not uh, popular in uh, every minute, but during the pandemic process, we revised our course and class planning uh, uh, techniques. Uh, each co uh, course plan was uh, adjusted into uh, responding the, the expectations of the European qualification framework and the uh, expected learning outcomes, but also providing room for uh, clear um, commitments of uh, using digital uh, uh, techniques. So all these things, uh, uh, didn't make it uh, uh, easy uh, and without uh, uh, discussions, debates, uh, sometimes uh, hard periods, but, but uh, our approaches, and this is my last uh, uh, thought, that uh, col the, the many experience that we collected in the last two years uh, provided us uh, a quantum leap in, in progressing in uh, digital and online uh, teaching and learning solutions, including the assessment challenges. Uh, and now, uh, as a second wave of this uh, rapid change, now we have to take care of the achieved results and sustain uh, the momentum of, uh, of progress uh, in applying uh, these uh, really inspiring but sometimes very difficult uh, opportunities. Thank you. Thank you very much, Istvan, for, for a really uh, comprehensive and, and really interesting presentation, especially, I think, the last slide on, on, on the different uh, uh, standardization and evaluation processes and methods that you've put in place uh, at METU. Um, I'd like to hand over now to uh, Dr. Elek Barta to, to share, um, yeah, your experience and, and practices at uh, Debrecen University, please. 
Good morning for everyone. Thank you for the possibility that I can give a brief overview about our university, the University of Debrecen, and uh, with the great emphasis to the quality policy and some sentences, I will tell, tell some sentences about the digitalization of our university. First of all, some facts and figures about the university, the foundation date of the university or the predecessor of the university. Uh, we are more than 100 uh, years old as a state university, but no, it is not a state, but a university of a foundation. And you can see the other numbers and, and uh, numerical data as we have 14 faculties, the number of international students is more than 7,000. We have 24 PhD students, uh, uh, schools. And some data about the international rankings position in 2022 in QS or Rhodes University ranking. You can see these uh, numbers. We have a health care system, a very big health care system in Hungarian demonstration farm and schools. These are our faculties, the, the portfolio of the educational activity of the university is high, as you can see, we cover almost all of the, the uh, fields of uh, higher education in Hungary, except except military studies, as far as I as far as I know. Some other data is uh, more than uh, five hundred thousand square meters. The built infrastructure of the university uh, on nine campuses. In uh, we we teach in more than 10 uh, cities in, in Hungary and, and in the neighboring uh, countries. Some data about the uh, city of Debrecen. Uh, Debrecen gives a very supportive and very positive environment for the education of Debrecen. We are in a symbiotic uh, connection with the city. We have international airport. It serves it serves the interests of the uh, international students. And some uh, data about our international activity. The past of the international connection of the university goes back for several uh, hundreds of years because the predecessor of the university, the Reformed College, had a very intensive connection with Western European universities in the earlier centuries. No, I have already mentioned that we have more than 7,000 student, international students. Uh, we have several hundreds of Erasmus and other bilateral uh, connections. We are members of, uh, of not only one, but several uh, international university networks like uh, European universities in the framework of Eurotech, uh, Eurotech uh, network or Carpel European universities of applied research and we are the members of the MIT Catalyst program. In the strategy of the university, we give a great emphasis to the uh, connections with the industrial partners, not only industrial, but other partners also, the partners in the, in the labor, labor market. I you know you can see only three faculties as, as example, Faculty of Arts and Humanities. They also have important industrial partners like IT services, National Instruments, British Telecom, and so on. <clears throat> To tell some sentences about the quality assurance policy of the university, it can be traced back up to the 90s of the last century, the middle of the 90s, when the predecessor of the Hungarian Accreditation Committee came into being, it was founded. And since the year 2000, it was the responsibility of the faculties they tried to somehow to manage the quality uh, policy uh, uh, in the means of with the means of the regulations of students, and later there will be newer, newer and newer elements of this uh, quality policy. In 2004, the new university, the University of Debrecen, set up the Directorate of Quality Policies, policies and Developments. 
This was responsible for the quality assurance policy for several years. And uh, in 2007, the University of Dublin won a very important uh, recogni recognition, uh, National Higher Education and Quality Prize. Uh, it was, uh, and some, some uh, statements about the quality assurance uh, system, the main goals of the quality assurance systems of the university. Uh, I don't want to go into uh, further details. And uh, no, yes, uh, it is a very actual uh, team because last week we had a real site visit, not only a virtual site visit, a real site visit from the Hungarian Accreditation Committee in the Debrecen. I hope it was successful. We felt that, that it was. <laughs> Yes, some sentences about the uh, about the digitalization policy of the university. Uh, a brief uh, overview about it. We have uh, an information technology uh, service center at the university. The basic IT infrastructure of the university is operated by this uh, this institutional unit. The service center it supervises the communication network server and uh, client uh, computers. The special IT services work based on these uh, components. The university has a multimedia and e-learning technical center. This center provides multimedia and e-learning services for the teaching work uh, of the university, not only for the teaching, but also for scientific work. Uh, you know, multimedia and e-learning are closely interlinked with, with uh, each other. They, they are complement uh, to each other to make a process of teaching, learning, and other activities of the university. I must mention the, the period of the epidemic because it was uh, important, important uh, time. Uh, it was, uh, there was a great increase of the demand for the service, you know, for this kind of services. We adapted the hardware infrastructure to the increased demands to improve the user experience. We restructured the systems uh, and this uh, helped the teachers and the students to fulfill their duties. <clears throat> These services are, uh, can be reached from all of our campuses more than 3,000 competing users are served across this multimedia and e-learning services. <clears throat> this service is used for content sharing, examinations, online conferences, and uh, several other uh, trainings. In addition, the center's staff also provides trainings, uh, several trainings for the users, for the teachers and for the students uh, also. Some data about the uh, communication platforms. So the primary uh, communication platform is Cisco WebEx. I think other universities can tell the same, the same effect. This has been integrated into the university's e-learning systems. This uh, WebEx supports, this support is available for the users by the multimedia and e-learning technical center. This WebEx is widely used in online education during the pandemic, it was very important, but there is another platform, Microsoft uh, Teams is also available at the university. And uh, as you can see, some numbers which are characteristic of the use of this WebEx system. I know there is a TV studio uh, in the in this uh, slide. Uh, teachers can record their lectures in a professional setting with the with the help of the multimedia and e-learning center uh, colleagues. The studio can be booked forward uh, uh, online online. In 2020, we participated 252 uh, recording, and in 2021, uh, 236 recordings were registered. 
So in my opinion, this uh, general uh, infrastructure is enough for the blended learning. If, if the demand would increase rapidly in the following years, we could serve it uh, in, the, in the help by the help of this uh, structure. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you very much indeed, um, uh, Dr. Barta, for yeah, this really, really interesting presentation. Um, in the interest of time, because we've actually already reached uh, the end of this session, what I propose is that we move straight to the next two presenters and ask them to share their presentations, um, also aiming to stick to around 10 minutes per presentation, and then we keep all the questions for the uh, four speakers uh, until the end uh, of all the presentations. So um, without uh, further ado, um, I would like to uh, hand over to uh, Dr. Ida Dringo Horvath, from, uh, who is Associate Professor and Head of the ICT Research Center at uh, Karoli Gaspar University of the Reformed Church. Um, Ida, please, uh, the floor is yours. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, thanks for having me here. Good morning um, to everybody. I'd like to speak about the teaching and learning centers in Hungary, uh, which were developed for um, uh, the digitalization, for supporting digitalization in uh, higher education, and especially about the center we have in, uh, at the Kari Gaspar University. Uh, first, here you can see some numbers. These training places were established since 2000, and they are of various sizes. Uh, on this chart, you can see some of the universities. You can see the abbreviations under the columns, and you can also see the, the year in which the university established a digital supporting center. Um, and you can also see the numbers of employees these centers have. As you can see, there are really big centers with 15 or even with 23 employees. And you can see some smaller ones. Maybe we are the smallest with only three employees at the Kari Gashper University, but we are really motivated uh, employees. Um, these centers are in Hungary mainly centralized. We did a survey in 2021 and, uh, and uh, they were all under the direction of rector or deputy rector or uh, chancellor. So these are central, centralized uh, uh, separate uh, digital uh, centers. On the next slide, you can see the name of the center. Uh, of each uh, university we, we, uh, we looked up. And here you can see they are working with, uh, with uh, similar terms in the names, and uh, they also have similar features, but diverse implementation. All of these centers uh, are uh, developing of information guides and teaching materials, but more recent form, uh, such as YouTube videos or podcasts, so not only PDF uh, documents as before, but uh, many of them in uh, uh, many of them um, have really uh, new features as well. Uh, they also organize trainings, but these trainings uh, are uh, varying; um, they have very different forms and methods. You can see blended learning courses. You can also see uh, online courses or face-to-face -face courses, but even other forms of, of supporting. Um, they try to reach out for the lecturers in different ways, such as Facebook groups or individual concealing or joint online coffee even. So some really interesting way uh, how, to reach, um, how to reach the lecturers. And they also try to to establish prizes and awards for with different focus and amounts. Um, but these are similar features which we, we have in this field. I would like to speak about um, 
a bit more uh, of uh, our specific uh, department of our training center at the Kadri Gashpar University of the Reformed Church so that you can see a specific training center, how it looks like, how it works. Um, we have um, a complex system of development. We have three columns, the assessment, the development, and the feedback. All uh, the taxes in green are already running. These are the features we are running now, and the tax uh, uh, in, in gray, they are in under development, under construction. So we make needs assessment, um, assessment of usage, uh, as well as development and uh, training needs. Um, we assess the colleagues every year, and we also make competency assessment. Um, we try to determine the competency level of the lecturers so that we can focus on the level and, and make specific courses. And this uh, competency assessment is based on the DIC competitive framework, which is a well-known framework established from the European Union in 2017-2018. And on the basis of these assessments, we are developing courses um, organizing co uh, training courses related, uh, related to the DICOMP EDU framework. Uh, this framework has six uh, areas, so we are not focusing only on teaching and learning, but only on assessment or only of uh, only on uh, or, or 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 as well on uh, on how to develop ourselves with digital um, um, features and uh, how to develop the competencies of the students. So this is a, a very well structured framework with six different areas of digital competencies. We are in building up uh, of an operate, uh, a mentoring network for organizing uh, the sharing of knowledge and experience of local small communities, communities in the university wide network to facilitate two-way communication between the center, the training center, and the, the um, local uh, communities. And we also try to build up a, a good practice database to share good practices for uh, development uh, purposes. And the, the third column is the feedback. We make course evaluations. All the courses we run uh, are evaluated by the attendees. Um, they have uh, some question, uh, some questions to answer after the course, and um, we also have this um, mentoring network, which is not fully developed uh, yet, but uh, in some way already um, running. Um, and we also uh, we also plan some uh, to have some feedback uh, with this technology award, educational technology award. So these are the elements we have in this complex uh, educational technology development at the university. And I would like you to talk about a bit more uh, um, of a specific element, um, uh, the training courses for lecturers. We have developed courses and we also have opportunity for individual consultation. So they can reach out for uh, the e-learning uh, experts and ask them uh, individually. Um, and here you can see some numbers uh, in this table. Um, when you see at the, at the, the, the last column, you can see we had uh, all together 21 different topics um, in 68 courses. And we had 341 participants on these courses, but 469 participations, which shows that there were many lecturers who participated not only in one course, but in two, three, up to even six courses. There were some of them who were very, very motivated in, in uh, uh, developing digital competencies. And under this table, you can see the six different topic of the uh, the Comp Edu framework. And here you can see how many courses were divided to each uh, topics. Uh, mostly we were dealing with digital resources, how to use these digital resources there and, and teaching and learning. But we had some other courses as, as well. And for the topic six and 
uh, and five we are de developing courses right now. And we also developed a course registration and administration interface. Um, this was developed for this project for um, the courses we uh, we have in this training center. Here we can announce the courses, the date, the topic, instruction, description. We have made uh, already um, also video descriptions. Um, the, the lecturers really like to know about uh, the, uh, the different courses before they're assigned for a course. Um, here we can administrate the courses, register the, the attendees, and we also have several automatic automating messaging for participants, such as how many participants are there already in the course, um, or afterwards they have automatic messaging for the evaluate uh, for the evaluation forms. Uh, here we can communicate, and here in this system we have the course uh, evaluation as well. Um, so okay. it works. <clears throat> Ida, apologies. Um, yes. Just wanted to flag. Would it be possible to to wrap up? up in one to two minutes just to allow for some time as well for maybe a question uh, as well in the other presentation but okay uh, thank you okay um here we have the conference um for education technology and higher education um which is quite unique um because it deals with this uh, topic specifically and here is a handbook uh, made for uh, higher education um in english and in hungarian as well uh, which is also quite unique because we don't have many specific um, materials for high, higher education lecturers uh, on this topic. Here you can see, here you can uh, see some uh, experts uh, interviews as well uh, and good practices and, and even um, about software and how to use them. Um, and then Two more slides about how can the work be supported um, dealing with digitalization and, and, and developing digital competencies in higher education. First of all, the leaders of higher education uh, should be motivated so that they value and raise awareness uh, of the importance of digitalization and the lecturers should be motivated more and more. Uh, it would be really important to have certain level of profici proficiency in digital competency uh, as an obligatory for entry in higher education or uh, the development and training of digital competencies should be acknowledged uh, in premium or career progress that would be uh, very important or the awards and uh, how could be uh, the work in the training centers and the work of the trainers supported um, for example, the translation and making available of international best practices, assessment tools and frameworks would be important for the work we do in the training centers, or that uh, we could be regularly invited or, uh, or um, these, these, these institutions for digitalization, um, a network or platform would be a, a good place for common thinking and for exchange of ideas, expertise, best practices that would be really helpful in form on, on workshops or professional day. And we could be also trained. Uh, the development and training of digital competencies of the trainers centralized, that uh, would be also very helpful for the work of these training centers. Or even we could imagine awards for best practices, which training center works uh, the best, um, in supporting the development of digital competencies. So these were some suggestions from our side. Uh, and I think it was very quickly, as you asked me. <laughs> Thank you for your attention. And, and yeah, feel free to ask the questions. Super. Thank you so much, uh, Ida. This was You're really, welcome. really interesting to, to see that overview uh, that you have of you know, these teaching and learners, learning centers in Hungary and also what your own teaching and learning center is doing at, at Karoli. Um, and now uh, we will actually listen to uh, Peter Balkany from Corvinus University, um, who is a senior lecturer and e-learning expert at the Center for Educational Quality and Methodology um, at the university. So uh, Peter, please, um, we'd be very interested to hear what, what your uh, center is actually doing at, at Corvinus University. 
Um, and again, if possible, I'd like to ask you to really stick to 10 minutes and that way we have five minutes left uh, to ask one question to actually all the, the four presenters to reflect on. Uh, Peter, the floor is yours. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, I'm Peter Bakhani and, uh, and also thanks for the opportunity to present here today and I will be very brief. Uh, and of course, I have some numbers about our universities, but uh, I assume most of you are uh, familiar with uh, our campus and uh, you can read uh, these data. So I'm going to the next slide as well. So uh, first of all, I uh, wanted to speak about some challenges and some main goals we um, had or have actually uh, in the last couple of years. And uh, from this, I want to highlight uh, that um, our, from our main challenges that uh, we have different levels uh, of, uh, of, the, of the pedagogical and methodological knowledge about online teaching inside uh, uh, the university about our lecturer and teachers. And on the other side, uh, we uh, have some main goals uh, about the digitalization uh, of learning. And that was a very important uh, goal to have a transparent, and coherent system uh, at the university. And for this, we used uh, kind of the same techniques uh, and what you already uh, shared with us today. But, um, but I will highlight some of uh, Corvins's uh, solutions for this uh, uh, topic. So um, we at the Corvinus University, we have a Moodle-based learning management system. Uh, it has all their courses uh, automatically uh, synchronized from Neptune, the student information system. And these courses automatically synchronized into Teams, which was our platform for uh, synchronous uh, online uh, uh, learning, and which is still uh, today. So we have kind of a automatically managed system for uh, having team groups for every courses uh, at the university, which was kind of uh, practical for the lecturer because they got uh, uh, all the resources that they needed uh, to be able to teach online from Moodle side and from Teams uh, side. Um, also, uh, I want to highlight that it was very important also for us to uh, methodologically and uh, uh, give IT support also uh, to the lecturers because we saw that uh, uh, in the last years uh, uh, they had to learn a lot uh, about how to uh, teach online and how to use these techniques, for example, Teams or how to make digital uh, content uh, from a PowerPoint presentation or from a higher level e-learning art learning tool. Also, uh, what was very important for us, uh, and it's, it's still today, that uh, the classes would go according to the classic timetable. So it was important for us that the students has the, and the teachers, of course, has the same timetable uh, as they uh, used to have. Um, before the massive uh, digital needs uh, uh, during the COVID. And it's still important uh, today. Of course, we have asynchronous classes, some of them, but most of them are uh, working as synchronous classes. Um, we supported the teachers, uh, the students, sorry, uh, also with uh, a couple of uh, solutions. Um, I want to highlight here the problem-based learning, which was a very important uh, methodological uh, approach uh, uh, from our team. And um, also I want to so, uh, highlight that uh, we uh, try to um, have as many uh, online and virtual groups and digital collaboration solutions um, as we can uh, implement uh, in, the, in the classes. We have guides for these trainings um, and coaching uh, with one-to-one uh, -one, uh, uh, supporting the lecturers and um, yes also there is this important part that we uh, want to encourage the students and want to give them uh, uh, resources about how to learn uh, individually um, based on online tools and uh, things like that and it has also its methodology and we would uh, give them uh, this kind of information as well. Um, about the teaching, I also uh, I already said that we have a Moodle-based system and the teams, uh, and um, actually we have uh, 
kind of uh, SCORM based and Moodle lesson based uh, online learning materials as well for the uh, asynchronous uh, learning part. Also, we are using uh, flipped classroom methodology uh, for the hybrid solution. And uh, there are some, I won't say MOOC, but kind of MOOC uh, kind of uh, situation or courses at the university as well. And uh, as you already uh, have in your presentation, we also have video uh, capability to record some, pre-record some presentation and give them uh, to the students uh, with, um, with, with the presentation-based content. So it's kind of a classic way, uh, but, but online. And uh, what's, what we are working on now and what's, uh, what is our future uh, about the digitalization is uh, actually a couple of things uh, about um, uh, um, the, 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 about these systems, which I uh, have on this slide. Well, one is, uh, and I like to highlight uh, from here, my voice, which is a digital tool for students uh, to give feedback uh, for the teachers. Um, and uh, that's what you can see on the screen on the mobile uh, phone. So that's something uh, which they can give uh, immediate feedback, uh, feedbacks about, the, uh, about their learning uh, or about their classes. So not just the, overall uh, evaluation at the end of the year, but uh, a continuous feedback uh, throughout the year. And also, I would like to highlight uh, our other digitalization project, Navigator, which is a kind of a um, student uh, supporting solution about how to process with their, uh, uh, with their courses uh, uh, regarding uh, to their uh, individual needs and um, individual uh, career passes. These are uh, some digital projects which are in the, in the phase of implementation. So maybe next year I can say something about how they go, but uh, I think these are very interesting and very um, you know, uh, important. Uh, um, th these will be very important solutions and resources uh, at our university. And also we are going forward with Moodle, uh, a Moodle and a Teams-based uh, learning solutions, teaching solutions. And maybe I uh, give some time for the questions in this matter. And thank you for your attention. Thank you very much, uh, Peter, for, for this, this really interesting presentation. And in fact, your last slide, uh, I think, <laughs> already introduces uh, the question which, which I uh, have planned to ask actually to all of you. You, you. you shared a little bit about sort of what your future plans and developments um, um, are in terms of, you know, how, how uh, you know, in terms of digital tools to support students and that that's sort of indeed, I think, the direction that you would like to focus on more. Um, so that was interesting to hear. Um, perhaps, uh, Ishtvan, uh, turning, turning back to you, you also listed a range of different um, uh, elements uh, that are being implemented at METU uh, for the monitoring and evaluation of, of, of quality and to support also, I, I guess, students and teachers. What is the most important lesson from all the developments that have been implemented in sort of, say, the last two years um, that you can think of? And, and what would be the key priority uh, then to go forward? Um, that you feel needs most attention and development? Thank you for the, for the question. I, I think that uh, at least uh, two separate areas uh, have to be, uh, have to remain closely interrelated and that's the pedagogical or learning and teaching renewal uh, and enhancement and also applying the great variety of uh, digitalization tools and uh, probably because it's very uh, deeply related to existing practices it's a cultural transformation of the individuals and also for the disciplinary communities and therefore multiple measures ha uh, have to support uh, the, the small steps that uh, are feasible uh, to expect from our colleagues and also to adapt 
by uh, by uh, our our students. So uh, complexity and patient, careful, strategic support for the process, uh, and uh, and uh, the commitment of leadership, and if possible, the whole mm -hmm. community of the universities is essential. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you. Um, Dr. Barta, I would like to ask you the same question, actually, um, for, for Debrecen University, because, you know, a lot is happening already at your uh, institution to, to monitor and evaluate uh, and do quality assurance uh, uh, of your course and programs. What, what is for Debrecen the key priority going forward to even further strengthen uh, the quality of your digital course and programs? What is sort of in the pipeline? Yes, uh, in my opinion, and I think it, it mirrors the opinion of the university, uh, one of the most important uh, tasks for us is to set up a methodological unit, methodological institutional unit, because the technical background of digitalization is ready. So we have plenty of tools and plenty of technical methods and good colleagues on this on this pillar. But the other pillar, uh, we, we don't have this other pillar, this methodological pillar. And it is not so easy because, uh, because of this colorful, uh, colorful educational portfolio of the university. There are great differences between the methodological demands, for example, at the Faculty of Music and the Faculty of Agriculture. But I could enumerate uh, these, uh, these fields uh, more. So I think this is the most important and it is being done. So, so we are on this uh, prog project and we try to set up this uh, unit. Super interesting. No, thank you. And uh, I, I guess that that is a challenge that we see in, in, in many institutions, right? Is that, you know, the, that you have on the one hand that technical support and the background and the foundation, if you will, uh, of the house or of the building is there, but sort of the methodological and sort of the, the actual fitting of the windows, et cetera, the methodological support yes. unit, that's perhaps not there and needs to be developed. Um, one, one short rem uh, remark, excuse me. So this digitalization is not a goal, but a tool, tool for the future education. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Um, Ida, um, turning to you, because you have a bit more of an overview of these sort of, you know, teaching and learning or methodological support units uh, across uh, the country. Um, based on sort of your research and, and knowledge and perhaps your own experience with your center, um, are there many connections between what different centers at different institutions in, in, in Hungary uh, are doing? For example, did you know about the different things that, that the other institutions present here today um, were, were doing? Uh, some of uh, the informations were new to me, but we meet once in a year in this conference I was uh, showing you in the PPT. And this conference is about the digitalization of higher education. And we invite many of uh, these uh, training centers, the head of the training center or some other uh, um, employee of the training centers are there. And we have a round table every year. So this would be the third year. Uh, I would be really happy if you all would come. You are kindly invited to this conference. And we have a round table there um, where uh, we have several um, uh, heads of the training centers. And we discuss the problems we have. We discuss the good practices we have, we share uh, common knowledge, we share information. So there is a lot of work uh, going on uh, in these conferences. And I hope it's going to uh, work like this uh, in, 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 in a couple, in, in many years, because this is important to share the information, to share the good practices. So yes, indeed, we have this opportunity and we try to carry on with this. Thank you. And um, then perhaps one final final uh, question indeed for you, Peter, and then we'll have to, we're gonna move to the panel discussion because it's already 10, 10.45. Um, uh, so you mentioned a little bit, and like I said about sort of your future plans, um, is there anything else beyond what you've shared in our presentation that is sort of in the pipeline at Corvinus University to really 
improve the quality of, of digital courses and programs? Um, Yes, uh, I would say that uh, there are always places to have more engaging learning materials, more, uh, more knowledge about how to make uh, better uh, digital products. And uh, one is, uh, I think it's especially important, the learning analytics, how we will be implement those uh, things into our courses, into our systems, into, our, into, into this whole system. So from, the, from my short answer, it is. Thank you. And I think that that last point about learning analytics is indeed a, a very important one because it indeed has, has a great potential to give you that sort of continuous and, and, and ongoing feedback on the experience of students, I think, in particular. Um, great. Thank you very much uh, to all four speakers for really, really insightful presentations. Um, uh, we will share the slides with all the participants after uh, uh, the meeting. So if there are things that you missed, uh, you can go read through those again, of course. Uh, and then I would like to hand over now to uh, my colleague, uh, Thomas Wico, who will uh, moderate a panel discussion between three further uh, uh, speakers for today. Uh, great, thank you, Francois. Can you hear me uh, adequately? I hope so. Good. Yes, we can um, hear you. Perfect. So you've heard from four presenters now about what they're doing in their institutions to create, uh, to manage, to monitor the quality and to support the quality of, of, of digital provision and the use of digital technologies in teaching. And so what we're going to do now is we're going to shift our focus a bit. Yeah? And so we're going to have three expert practitioners from three different institutions. And I'm going to ask them to shift their focus I'd like them to start by telling us a bit about what they are doing to create and, man and manage the quality of digital provision in their institution. But crucially, we're going to shift our focus and I'm going to ask them on the basis of your experience and what you're doing in your institution, what does this mean? The future of quality assurance for for digital study should look like, right? So I want you to tell me what are the procedures and the standards that should be used for digital provision in light of your experience, right? So I want you to tell me what uh, in future MAB should be doing or what they should stop doing to hinder uh, digital provision in your institution. You probably all know of, of the Greek myth of Procrustes. Yeah? So he was a blacksmith and he would capture people, right? And he had an iron bed and he would take people and put them in the iron bed, right? And if their legs were too long, he would cut off their legs. And if their legs were too short, he would stretch them and, and, and torture them so they fit the bed, right? We do not want quality assurance to look like this, right? Accreditors and accrediting organizations across the OECD should not be procrustes who are torturing institutions, stretching their legs or cutting off their legs, yeah? Right? What should be happening is that the accrediting body as it's in the, in the, in the, in the ministries, as they set policy, should be learning from the best things that you're doing, yeah? Right? And adapting to that to take forward the use of digital technologies in higher education, right? So that's why we want you to share what you're doing, but then tell us next, yeah, what that means for what policymakers should do and accreditors should do or not do in future. So I have three uh, uh, presenters here uh, whose names I will massacre, uh, Peter Zakal, uh, Peter Baldi, and um, uh, Levante Kiss. And I'm going to ask each of them uh, to respond to that uh, uh, for, for five minutes. Uh, and I'm going to be ruthless about enforcing that. And then we're going to tr try to create a little scope at the end for people to take questions and for people to question one another. Panelists, you're welcome to question one another. At the end of this session, what we will do then uh, is we will go to a break. We will have a 15 minute break. Do not uh, exit. Uh, please, uh, the meeting, just uh, uh, turn off your camera and your, your microphone. 
uh, but, but then you will be assigned to uh, all of the participants will be assigned to groups and there will be a moderated small group discussion after a 15 minute break during which time you can have coffee, go to the toilet and have a schnapps or whatever it is you want to do. Okay, so uh, uh, we'll start now um, uh, with uh, 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 Peter Zekal of the, uh, and, and ask, uh, I understand you have really interesting data collection and monitoring uh, the institution and faculty level in your institution to, to monitor the quality of digital provision. So what are the key indicators you think uh, are needed to take account of the quality of digital provision in higher education institutions. And I'd like to invite you to then think about perhaps what that means for what accreditors should be looking for and asking institutions to report on uh, in an accreditation process. So what are the key indicators, two or three, that signal quality in programs uh, and, and what does that mean for what uh, the future of accreditation should look like? Uh, please, over to you, uh, 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 Peter. Uh, thank you, Thomas. Uh, good morning, everyone. It's a pleasure to be here. And first of all, I would like to emphasize that uh, MOB is not torturing us. On the contrary, <laughs> uh, there, is a, there is a great conversation uh, and dialogue uh, uh, with the institutes, I think. And we get a great help from MOB uh, uh, when we are thinking about uh, accreditation and quality uh, insurance. Uh, Speaking about indicators, it's a tricky question and it's a very, very complex question, I think. Um, my first thought is that uh, the model change gave us an opportunity. Uh, before the change, uh, the number of students was a primary financing indicator. And that was, to be honest, the most important for the university. Of course, there was the quality indicators uh, there, but we were focusing more for the primary financing indicator, which was the number of students. After the model change, 25 new indicators uh, became financing parameters, and suddenly it became a common talk across the university about these indicators, how we should reach them, are we good enough, um, how we should measure them, what are the definitions, et cetera, et cetera. And now we, there, is, there is this... Uh, a uh, great momentum that we can do this something uh, across the university. Uh, of course, some of the indicators can be measured, can be developed uh, by the action of the institutes and uh, some not. University of Szeged is focusing uh, on the first type of indicators. Uh, uh, we always, uh, 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 are looking for the success of the student. That is our key motivation, the success of the student. Uh, how we measure the success of the students? There are several indicators. For instance, we monitor the course descriptions uh, at the beginning of the semester, semester. It's very easy. Are they published? It it's, can be a key indicator. Uh, do they contain the necessary learning output elements? Uh, we also uh, monitor the evaluation system, uh, the assessments, uh, which includes uh, the distributions uh, of the test and, uh, and uh, the notes uh, uh, of the courses. If they are not following uh, the normal distribution, uh, our central unit signals uh, to the faculties. Uh, other interesting, interesting quality indicator is the number of the credit transfer. Uh, in my opinion, the network of the courses. We are trying to monitor and build a map uh, of the path of the learning journeys of each student and figure out why they change and how they change. We developed a tool for the system, uh, study system, Neptune, uh, where the students can check uh, which level they are uh, at the different study program. For instance, somebody is at 60% uh, pharmacologist and uh, can be 25% chemist. Uh, it uh, leads to help uh, uh, to de decrease the dropout rates, which is not only the very important quality indicators, but also financing indicator. Uh, the third, uh, as a quality indicator, are the skills and its labor market uh, readiness. Uh, developing a study program online or at present is a demanding task for the Institute. And our goal is to make our service, our product as labor market ready as possible. 
uh, University of Szeged just started a pilot called Skillset Implementation with Coursera. And Skillset are job-based learning programs uh, and innovation that enables the university to prepare the students for high demand jobs uh, at a uh, large scale. Uh, students choose their target uh, entry-level jobs and uh, the skills are determined, the exact skills they need to learn uh, uh, um, for those and help them uh, to prepare for that. Uh, it's an upside down approach a little bit, and it needs a content dialogue with the companies. At we, what we are expecting from MOB is uh, to help us and give us guidelines uh, uh, with these, um, uh, uh, for these uh, uh, dialogues and, and uh, conversations with the companies, and also uh, help us to, to um, uh, make the regulation less rigid, uh, because it's an experimenting thing and lots of things are changed around us. Thank you. And sorry about the noise. There is a, a, a road working across the street. Um, and and in, in my courtyard, they are removing all the asphalt and there are giant jackhammers working today. So I too have noise um, and it was not a problem. Thank you so much. <laughs> I appreciate that. Could, could I ask you just very briefly, um, uh, give us, you said of MAB, you want to uh, give us guidelines for dialogue with companies. Could you just elaborate on that point a tiny bit? Well, companies usually have a shorter term vision uh, mm -hmm. if we are co comparing to the visions of MOB. Uh, they are focusing uh, the, the labor market but, and the needs that they have right now. And they were yeah. looking, and when they're coming to university, they're saying, we need. Um, that amount of students from that study field right now and of course the university would like to help for them but, but we need we need to also give them some some longer uh, vision and longer cooperation and we are okay with let's say the, here's the company let's make a module named by this company and we are selecting the courses uh, which fits into the junior program of that specific company uh, and helps them uh, but it will but they should also understand that it should remain uh, and, and part of the bigger uh, bachelor or master programs and and uh, uh, at that case, we cannot really give anything uh, for for these companies. And what why, what we are asking from Mob maybe that also also signal uh, these uh, and and these messages to the to the companies to the labor market uh, individuals. Um, uh, thank you. That's that's actually a very interesting point about balancing uh, the sort of the longer term academic uh, perspective against the immediate needs of the company. And there are many ways in which uh, uh, higher education institutions across the OECD are attempting to do that. Sometimes through some kind of continuing education, the development of micro credentials. So you're sort of topping up training that responds to the particular needs of a firm that may be added onto uh, a normal study program, whether you have the flexibility to do that, uh, both through your funding system, through your allocation of staff time and through the quality assurance system is, is another question. Um, thank you for a very interesting uh, presentation. Um, if we could now uh, uh, turn next to uh, Peter Baldi, um, I would like you to, to could you please um, also tell us a bit uh, about your recent uh, experience of, of evaluation by MAB, um, you know, what you kind of got out of that experience and, and what uh, thoughts you have about uh, uh, the process of accreditation going forward, especially adapting it to, to digital provision. Thank you very much. Um, I join also with my apologies to you as you to me also, I have some heavy works in my garden, but I hope uh, it will not disturb us. Well, um, it was more than two years ago, we had the last mob, uh, uh, accreditation meeting, but uh, First of all, I have to say that it was really smooth, although we have the COVID just came and we had to do it at the first time in, uh, I think it was also for the mob the first time to do it online. 
So we together we worked out a bit like uh, how we can move to digital accreditation. And uh, oh, it means that also we faced at that very moment the, uh, the kind of the problems colleagues were also mentioning before, how we move forward to a digital learning. Um, I think the basic for, for a kind of an extra uh, accreditation is, is, a, is the basic is the external pressure we have. We have on the management of the university, we have on the teachers, uh, we have on the students also that someone is reviewing how we work and what we do. And uh, well, I, I, I just can uh, say thanks to, to the MAB. We have so many uh, good recommendations. Uh, we, we are really uh, overload to try to, to reach as goals. But uh, if we are moving towards the uh, future text concerning the digitalization, uh, I just remember some, uh, some discussions of us with MAB concerning the churn. Uh, and I think these two words are quite similar from the point of the view that they do not have any negative or positive meaning in itself, but also the universities has to describe and has to define what they mean and what they think good level of churn, good level of digitalization. Churn, uh, I mean, the, how many students left uh, the, uh, the learning without getting the diploma. Uh, and it's obvious for all of us that some students left anyway, we leave anyway, anyway, so we can not uh, decrease this indicator to zero. Uh, but on the other hand, if this indicator is really high, it shows something about the institution, about the program itself. So we have to uh, uh, interact and we have to interfere uh, in this, uh, uh, if, if this indicator shows. And I think the first what MOP should uh, ask from the universities that they should define their goals with the digitalization. Because if I measure that how many uh, online courses you have, does it mean anything? Nothing. Um, in itself, it's, 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 this percentage is not an indicator which shows a positive or negative uh, uh, um, meaning. Uh, it can have to be compared to a certain goal, what university would like to reach. But when we arrive to this very point, we see the question, which is quite old, uh, what do we mean uh, in-house learning, distance learning, online learning, evening learning, and so on and so on. We have this, uh, even in the Hungarian uh, regulation, legal regulation, we have these words. And this means that we have different kind of learnings. And with this learning, we have different uh, uh, amount of, uh, uh, of um, classrooms to fill to 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 find uh, to to finish for the students and what's the difference where the difference will come at the end and this shows me a kind of an effort all uh, the hungarian ministry the mob the university should work on a bit what does it mean to have an online course in this different type of uh, education's learnings? And when we arrive to it, I would like to highlight my, uh, maybe my basic uh, input to the, today's discussion is that I think we should get a new concept, how we analyze our work. And this concept should be based on time. What we really learn from the past few v uh, years I think in the, at the universities it, that is that if you are planning an online course, you are planning a digitalized learning, then you have to really care about the time of the student, how much time he should spend on reading, learning, doing tests and so on and so on. <laughs> and if you are really heavily uh, um, managed to care about the student's time, then it will change the way how you want to do your uh, learning, how you want to teach the students. And this change should be measured, monitored, I think, by the MUB. Uh, we have many kind of different uh, uh, indicators how we can do it. 
for example, not just the, uh, the uh, number of digitalized course, but the, uh, if we measure differently, what kind of courses we put online? Is this a uh, presentation or is this a uh, practice and so on? And in this case, we have in deep uh, knowledge how we changed ourselves. And on top of it, or after it, when we care about the students' time, we measure it, we have to ask the students as well. And uh, this was also a big learning for us that at, from the very beginning, right after the COVID started, we changed our surveys towards the students. We asked the students whether this change made more efforts put more work on them or not? What does it mean to have a digital course and not? So I think mob sh shouldn't really uh, um, check, I mean, the students themselves, but as the universities to check the change, to ask the students about the digitalization. Is it better? Is it worse? How it went? Uh, was the student, uh, uh, was the teachers, the professors up to date how to do it? Uh, uh, had, did, did they have enough uh, knowledge, pedagogical skills to do the digital education? And uh, uh, well, what else I wrote down to myself? I think that's basically uh, what I wanted to highlight here. If you have any questions. Okay. Right thank you, judge. thank you, thank you very much. Um, and uh, uh, there are a few questions would be very good to follow up. But we should move now um, uh, uh, to to Dr. Levante Kis of uh, Semmelweis uh, University, and I'm going to ask him to. Uh, I see here in my prepared remarks, um, he was going to tell us a bit about sort of the key areas in which the institution is supporting uh, both the learners and teachers in their study programs. But again, I would like to ask him to sort of reflect on the experience of his institution and practice in recent years and tell us what does that mean for what a quality assurance process should, what, what restrictions should be taken away and what positively should be done in a quali quality assurance process to help your institution do a, a better job. Um, the floor is yours, please. Thank you very much and thank you for the invitation. And first of all, I would like to join to my colleagues in, in saying and indicating that actually MOB is our ally. Ally because uh, probably most of us are facing uh, the pressure from research, you see, because if you want to invest in better education, probably we are confronting sooner or later research because our teachers, their career and so on are dependent more on uh, research most of the time, like it or not. So, so this is an important thing that we have a mob, which is uh, stressing the importance of, of the educational part as well. So thank you for that. Now, uh, regarding our experience uh, and regarding the current times, I, I would uh, start with saying that I believe that these are very delicate times for digitalization at this point, because uh, one of the main messages from our experience is that uh, actually many teachers uh, looked at digital means as uh, something to, to, to solve the situation during COVID. And now that, that many of our teachers are feeling that, okay, that's more or less over or hopefully over, now we don't need any more this whole thing and we can move back to the previous uh, way of teaching now. Therefore, uh, actually at that time it was a necessity and even those very traditional teachers we had, they had no other choice. But now they feel that they can again raise the argument against it, and they do. So, so, so we must work a lot on, on this like, like to be seen as an opportunity. What we were doing uh, during COVID, we were training our teachers, we were giving all kinds of support on, on digital skills uh, to them, helping with the authorizations, uh, with the LMS systems. And we were focusing a lot on the teachers. Actually, our center is, 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 uh, is for the teachers, at least for now, but we do feel the need that we should open up towards the students as well. The Students' Union was a big help for us at that time when, when, when we had to move to the digital uh, environment in 2020. But now I believe that we should, uh, we should uh, officially actually open our arms towards them. Uh, all in all, the students did not have that much problem with digital tools, I need to say. So, so they did not need that much support. 
But what they need and they still need, and they will need even more if we move towards digitalization is, is sort of time management skills, coaching like uh, programs, mentoring, because what they do is that they are postponing things that now everything is online, everything is recorded. I can listen to it later. But then they don't listen to it. They don't do it, and then they they unfortunately fail at the exam. So so if we want to maintain uh, well the attrition rates or, or or have better ones, we need to be very careful with this digitalization. And and uh, as I am from a medical university, I need to stress that uh, it was never an idea from our part to have a wholly digital program, and it cannot be. And I would not suggest it to anyone. This is another consideration. Uh, maybe what I can tell you just now, we have an exam period. I can tell you that there are at least five times as many students personally here in the building now uh, compared to what was happening before the COVID. Students are happy to be here socially. They are learning together. They enjoy the environment. So uh, I believe uh, we should focus on the sort of uh, educational environment as well. But focusing on the digitalization, so now it's an opportunity and we need to, we need to have incentives. But uh, knowing my teachers uh, uh, or our teachers rather, uh, I mean, there should be a very delicate uh, balance between carrots and sticks. So, so I would avoid the like super strict regulations because if we cannot convince our teachers they, they, are, they, they are not going to do a good education. I mean, they, they will, okay, they will do some lecture online, they will do something online, but that's, that's not going to be a fun for, for, or a useful thing for anyone. So, so all in all, there is a big trend of professionalization, we like it or not, but we, we will need more teacher education. We will need faculty development programs. And that would be one thing that I would uh, actually ask or suggest to MOB that they should look carefully into what kind of faculty development programs are available for teachers, what are the expectations, what are the, the minimal requirements for becoming an assistant professor, and so on and so on. So, so clearly defined faculty development programs uh, are needed. And also, I'm happy to say that, that uh, we do have this center for teaching and learning, but that's not really typical. Just like Professor Bart has mentioned, this, this, is, this is needed because now, it should be more professional. We have all kinds of systems, LMS systems. In this digital era, we our teachers should be a lot more careful about what's happening. Someone, Peter Baldi, was saying the the time management as well. So 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 we need to be careful about what what do we assign, how how much time that needs. Because uh, one experience was that actually our teachers thought that students are not doing anything at home, nothing. I mean, they have they have ample time. 48 hours per day, so they can do this, 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 everything. And, and students were, were sort of overwhelmed. And, uh, and therefore we need uh, centers which, which can help with this training programs for teachers. Uh, and, and actually, well, some, some indicators of the LMS systems might be useful. Uh, MOP could look at that, okay, so what, what is the digital environment in this, in this, in this uh, higher education uh, environment? And this is about the digital, digital stuff of, of the learning, but, but I think digitalization, like if we take a look at this digital higher education, I agree a lot that, that there are many other parts like quality assurance or using data to reduce attrition, because uh, actually we should probably invest uh, in, in, uh, in programs that are detecting those students who are failing. Like, there are lots of data in these in these elements in the Moodle, in the Teams, and wherever. So, so to reach those goals that are in this new model change system to reduce the attrition rates, we need to use that data, and that that is digitalization. We we need programs that can can pinpoint who is the student at risk. So, all in all, I think uh, these are in a nutshell because the time is up. So, thank you for the opportunity to say all these things. Thank, thank you very much. And it was, it was interesting um, uh, to hear uh, the emergence of, of some sort of a common thread of views across, across each of you about sort of the, the, the opportunities and the challenges that are presented uh, in the transition to the digital environment. Um, and I think there's some really helpful suggestions uh, about what needs to happen to support 
to support learners in the problem of time management, who I guess are used to having a very structured learning experience in sight. So there's sort of, that solves for them the problem of time management and executive functioning that uh, needs to be rethought and the support that's needed uh, for instructors as well. And things like the use of, of, of uh, data to deal with, as, as, as Dr. Baldi said, that how do we address the problem of, of churn or student attrition? Um, and uh, these are, are, are a basis for, um, uh, for, for, I think, future discussion that should be continued. Um, we will go to uh, a small break now. The break will, will last for uh, 15 minutes. We're asking you not to, um, uh, to exit the meeting, but simply to mute yourself and to turn off your camera. And um, we are scheduled to um, return at 11.30. People will be assigned to breakout groups uh, on the basis of their roles. So there will be uh, students, uh, instructors, uh, administrators, and others sort of put in groups with one another. Uh, and we'll um, uh, put quest some questions to you. Um, and then we'll return to a plenary session subsequently uh, to share your, your, um, uh, to, to, uh, res your responses to those questions. Um, and uh, Rosie, would you share please, uh, um, I think you can, um, the slide that has the questions for the breakout sessions. And so people will be uh, prepared to, uh, to respond to those when they return. And you'll be assigned automatically. Uh, so you'll be in those groups when you return from your break. Uh, but please do take uh, 15 minutes um, now, um, uh, or rather 13 minutes until 11.30 uh, uh, to, to refresh yourself. Uh, and with that, I think we're OK. And we'll see you back here in 13 minutes uh, to discuss uh, those, those questions, each of you, um, uh, one of those questions in your group. Uh, thanks very much. Over to you, uh, Francois. Indeed, uh, I think you said it all, Thomas. So uh, see you all in 13 minutes at 11.30. For those of you who are joining uh, the breakout discussions, um, you would have been you know, informed and assigned beforehand. And to all the others, um, we will see you back at uh, 12, uh, where we will uh, report uh, on the outcomes from uh, the breakout discussions uh, in plenary. So some of you have a slightly longer break uh, for others you will need to do some work in the breakout discussions. So have a good break and see you in a few minutes.
Okay, so welcome uh, back, everyone. Uh, hope you had a good uh, break. So uh, if everything goes well, uh, you should be receiving an automatic message uh, any minute now uh, to join one of the uh, breakout rooms. Um, and then you, there we go. And you just click the automatic notification that you receive. Uh, to join and then uh, yeah, we will see each other again here in about uh, 30 minutes normally.
We will shortly start the <clears throat> this plenary session, but I believe uh, we are all here now. Okay, perfect. Um, so welcome back to, to plenary. Um, uh, we trust the uh, discussions were interesting. So we're going to go uh, straight away, given that we're a little bit behind to the key, key takeaways from uh, the group uh, discussions. Um, I will invite each of the OECD moderators to provide a very short summary of two, three minutes. Please team, do not exceed the two, three minutes. Um, the first two groups uh, addressed one particular question around the role of the Hungarian Accreditation Committee in terms of the accreditation standards and methods implemented by the Accreditation Committee and how they should be revised to support whether offer of high quality digital study programs. So I will invite the moderators of each of these two groups. Uh, so first, Simon, please go ahead and give us the key takeaways of your group. Thanks, Paolo. Um, yes, very quickly, um, our discussion centered really on the, on the role of MOB in terms of the extent to which it should leave um, play its, its sort of role um, of, of a guardian of, of basic guardian of quality, but that leaves space to institutions versus the, the, what, the extent to which it should intervene in a sense to, to provide support to um, support the expansion of digitalized uh, digital offer. Um, the, the basic, the consensus view I would say is that, that, that basically that um, what, what MUB needs to do is pay attention to, to digitalization in, its, in, its, um, in the standards and guidelines that it uses, but that it needs to leave um, room for maneuver uh, to institutions, including to experiment and develop new approaches, in, especially in this is a, a sort of a, a developing area of digitalization. So that space needs to be created, but they do need to pay attention in their, in their broader um, assessment of internal procedures and internal quality assurance um, systems. So the principal responsibility for quality lies with the institution, but MOB's role is to check that the procedures, basic procedures are in place, um, that there may be some role um, in terms of more active, proactive role in the area of um, uh, perhaps sharing good practice in terms of internal, internal approaches good sharing also practice in terms of use of different models. There was some disagreement on whether um, there should be perhaps some degree of, of, of guidance on sort of which platforms or tools to use, but there was disagreement. So some people saying that that would be useful, others saying you shouldn't really intervene and that's not the role of the mob. Um, finally, so, so, so essentially a, a, broad, a broad agreement on the, on, the, on the devolution of responsibility to institutions, but with mob playing adequate attention, paying adequate attention to digitalization issues. A, a related question then is whether the European standards and guidelines which guide mobs um, activities but all European higher uh, quality assurance bodies is whether or not there's a role for any kind of additional guidance at European level probably the ESG allow space for digitalization, but is there, is there perhaps a, a question about whether any further action is needed at European level to support a broader European understanding of many of these issues that you're discussing in Hungary? That's what I, I would say as a feedback. Great, thank you very much, Simon, also to keep on time. Uh, so this will be followed by Thomas who address similar issues. Thank you, Paolo. Oh, uh, let's see if we can go to four points. The first of which uh, repeats uh, Simon's that there's a desire on the part of, of uh, people from institutions for there to be uh, a better basis for knowledge and experience sharing across institutions. Um, conferences are good, but there needs to be a sort of a stronger institutional platform within which that occurs. Um, that wouldn't normally be the responsibility of the Quality Assurance Agency. There are many, many models across Europe uh, of, of uh, in, in many countries of how to do that. And those will be part of sharing, sharing within the project. A second point was made that there needs to be, um, uh, there's an appreciation for the need for greater sort of flexibility with respect to the, the guidelines that existed before COVID around fully online provision, which uh, in that balance between uh, scope for experimentation uh, and having yet predictability and adequate guidance, I think there's a thought, those are too, too far towards the restrictive end. Um, two pages of, of detailed guidance there with, uh, with overly restrictive conditions around um, some aspects of fully online provision. Whereas with respect to uh, blended and hybrid provision, there is at present a lack of 
uh, clarity about exactly what those things are and what the quality provisions around those should be, given the novelty of those, but a desire for there to be uh, developed a consensus a sort of understanding of those, both of what they are and around um, what, what guidance should be given around the quality of provision. A third point uh, was uh, a general emphasis on the need for a stronger student perspective around the experience and the vision of quality to be incorporated into processes of quality monitoring and, and quality assurance um, than exists at present. And a fourth point was essentially uh, uh, that there are in reality two mobs. Um, there is the mob of new program establishment um, uh, 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 that is uh, reflects uh, 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 an ex ante process, uh, a process that's uh, much too highly prescriptive um, and uh, in not sort of uh, pedagogically uh, guided, but with a more regulatory orientation and a different mob that is engaged in the retrospective review uh, of both uh, of institutional accreditation and retrospective program review that is based in the ESG criteria and is a helpful collaborator in the work of institutions and programs. Um, uh, but there's still a greater need for uh, predictability and clarity about um, how those processes uh, and guidance uh, under the uh, retrospective process will work so the institutions can have a better understanding uh, uh, and better anticipate um, the, the feedback they're going to get and how to respond to that. Um, quickly, those were the Great. points. Thank you very much, Thomas, uh, for this very useful and structured summary. And now we're going to the remaining three groups who addressed a different, a different issue about the indicators of quality that higher education should use to monitor and evaluate the quality of the digital study programs. So we first go to Francois, who led, uh, who moderated a group uh, with staff responsible for supporting students and staff. Uh, please, Francois, go ahead. Thank you, uh, Paolo. Um, I will uh, summarize the discussion by making three points. So um, the sort of consensus in the group was that if you're thinking about, you know, what is a good quality online uh, course or program, um, that actually the sort of basic indicators of quality that you should look at uh, as an institution or as, as MAP when you come in and, and evaluate those are pretty much the same as for in-person programs. So it's about sort of the basic principles for good quality teaching and learning remain the same. So it's about uh, making sure that there is self-directed and collaborative learning, uh, that there is student-centered learning, et cetera. But then of course, there is a certain subset of, of key quality elements that need to be in place uh, for uh, ensuring a good quality uh, online uh, course, um, such as you know, course design, making sure teachers have the right uh, methodological uh, uh, skills for that, the quality of the content. But then thinking about, you know, indicators, there's distinction that the group made between, you know, you have quantitative indicators such as uh, 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 student completion rates, uh, for example, that you can monitor, uh, which, which are very important, but they felt that there is an increasing need to focus on qualitative indicators, and in particular, you know, satisfaction of students and of, uh, and of teachers, and to sort of take up that feedback uh, as you're monitoring and evaluating the quality of, of online courses and programs. And this means that to come to the third point, um, how do you then evaluate those, uh, all these different elements? It means, you know, monitoring and evaluation is complex, uh, the group felt. So you need a wide variety of monitoring and evaluation methods, both quantitative and qualitative. So you need some, some need to be more automated. You know, learning analytics is very helpful. But at the same time, you know, more qualitative and really having discussions with students and teachers and, and making sure that collaboration and sharing as part of assessment processes uh, is part of it is really useful. So they mentioned class visits, um, focus groups, in addition to, you know, things such as uh, surveys. So I think that's those were sort of the main points that came out of our discussion. Thank you very much. Uh, Francois, uh, for bringing the, the perspective of staff responsible for supporting students and staff. And now we go to group four, where Andrea moderated a group of instructors uh, talking about also indicators. Andrea, please, you have the floor. Yeah, thank you also to all the colleagues that were with me in the group and shared their thoughts. We discussed um, indicators related to students. 
indicators related to the work of teachers or instructors. Um, we also mentioned uh, curricular design. Um, another discussion was on indicators related to the availability of data and the related question of how to address qualitative data and make sure that qualitative data and quantitative data are put together in a, in a, in a system that makes sense. Finally, we also talked about um, the importance that digital programs also have a certain level of labor market acceptance. And um, I will not go into detail into all of these different groups, but um, I would like to uh, highlight some points. Uh, we broadened the discussion from digital programs to digital um, education in general or parts of digital um, digital um, delivery. So on students, I think it is important to mention what also Francois said before, the uh, students' experience and the students' performance, the um, question of attrition, which is related also to curricular design, identifying which are the moments in study programs that are more difficult and what can be done from the perspective of curricular design to enhance study success. Instructors, an important point here is also the level of uh, interaction, student-student uh, or student-teacher interaction or also interaction between students and the world of work. Um, and finally, on a labor market acceptance of digital uh, programs, this is uh, a part which would um, maybe qualify more attention um, because also of the different uh, target groups uh, of uh, students that may participate and the implications on, on teaching um, methods and, um, and learning methodologies. Thank you. Great. Thanks so much, uh, Andrea. And now the final group, which was moderated by Gillian and brought together students to also discuss indicators. Please, Gillian, you have the floor. Thank you very much, Paolo. So um, just as a quick point of context, I think the, the point was very strongly made uh, before we started to talk about the, the specific measures that students are now in the system with a range of different uh, experiences. Some of them were around before the COVID pandemic, and so they were able to uh, have the experience of adjusting to online education with all of the various uh, stresses and difficulties that that brought about, but also there are a group of students who started their education during the, the pandemic. And now we're transitioning to on-campus education, which brings a different set of stresses and difficulties because these students have to learn how to basically uh, engage themselves fully in the on-campus experience. So I, I think that Francois and Andrea already covered many of the metrics that we also discussed as possible quality measures, including measures of performance, experience, and engagement. Um, there was definitely a strong emphasis from our group that we should focus on student results by mode of delivery. And this is very heavily linked to students' experiences with online assessment versus in-person assessment, where it was felt that these are two completely different forms of assessment and actually in some cases, maybe results improved with online assessment. So there's a sense that institutions as part of their quality assurance should be monitoring that process much more carefully. There was also a strong emphasis on the need to uh, survey students regularly on their preferences and what they need. Uh, we should acknowledge that there are a group of students who do benefit from having online education available to them. And as part of quality, uh, as part of the quality uh, assurance process, uh, institutions could consider developing means for students in a sort of a very formal way to apply to learn online in particular circumstances, either regularly or, or temporarily. I uh, guess similar to you know, our teleworking policies that we have uh, in, in the business and uh, government sector. Um, and I guess just a final point, we shouldn't assume that students know everything about technologies and tools. They certainly know a lot, uh, but there are students who struggle to understand how to use basic digital tools. So, where tools are introduced, they should come with accompanying uh, guides and training for how to use them. Thank you. Great, thank you very much, uh, Gillian, and thank you to all colleagues for such uh, to the point and succinct uh, summaries, which were prepared in very little time. So thank you so much and for the moderation and all the participation of you all in the breakout sessions. 
Uh, we now move to the uh, final substantive uh, session, uh, which is about the future, about uh, supporting the quality of digital higher education in Hungary from the perspective of higher education stakeholders at the national uh, level. Uh, so I would like uh, then to uh, basically bring to you this session. We're happy to have a um, very good set of speakers, uh, two representatives from the Hungarian Accreditation Committee, Dr. Valeria Xepe and Dr. Peter Levente Lakatos, and own one representative from the uh, Ministry for Innovation and Technology from the Higher Education Education um, Training Department, Dr. Gabor Mesaros and uh, also the Secretary General of the Hungarian Rectors Conference. Um, the President of the National Union of Students, Laszlo Morai, uh, presents his apologies. Uh, he could not, in the end, uh, be with us today. Uh, so we'll be having representatives of the Accreditation Committee, the Ministry, and the Rectors uh, Conference. The objective of the session is very much to invite our speakers to reflect on two points. Uh, first of all, to reflect about uh, what they have heard today on the presentations and outcomes also of the breakout sessions and how they believe they might take into account in their future work or actions within their responsibilities uh, uh, in terms of how they could support um, institutions in Hungary to strengthen the quality of their digital provision. At the same time, we would very much like them to explain how they are already supporting higher education institutions in this um, exercise and now they are planning to expand the support uh, for quality uh, digital higher education. So with no further ado, I will give the floor to Dr. Valeria Gzepe, President of the Hungarian Accreditation Committee, to provide the perspectives uh, from the committee. So Dr. Gzepe, you have the floor. Thank you very much, Chair. So the, you highlighted uh, very important issues, um, and I guess uh, at least one or uh, would be enough uh, to touch uh, all of, uh, upon the issues uh, mentioned today. Um, I want to get uh, through shared first the presentation. I, I thank you all the uh, presenters for sharing their experiences and the future plans uh, with us, what, what they have done during the pandemic, what they have learned from. And um, I would uh, like to emphasize that the role of uh, MOB is uh, quality certification and evaluation. So we, we are moving toward um, of uh, uh, providing services, support, um, consultations, etc. But our main task is that uh, certification and evaluation. Uh, and because uh, we use uh, our version for the ESG, otherwise we wouldn't be a full member of the European Association of Quality Assurance Agencies, ENCA, and wouldn't be registered in the uh, European Quality uh, Assurance Register. So we use this ESG with a delicate student focus. Um, we have our standards and guidelines and we want to be as clear as possible in the uh, guidelines. Uh, but uh, the QA is the responsibility of the higher education institutes. And I'm very happy that uh, most of the higher education institutes in Hungary have learned this and they catch up uh, to uh, with and that they set their goals. Digital QA, uh, yeah, they were um, fantastic um, requests uh, how to have the uh, high education institutes um, in dialogues with companies. We do, we uh, now have in more and more um, uh, expertise committees of MOB uh, stakeholders uh, from the most important parts uh, of the labor market. Even we have a national advisory board full with stakeholders from in industry, agriculture, um, health uh, care, etc. So the, we have a direct contact and dialogue with them. So with this, we can help fight uh, further. It's very important what was mentioned that we 
should define what we mean when we do speak about digital education. So um, uh, I have the experience and um, uh, some of people and even in the breakout sessions, as I see, you focused on the courses. Please move to from a course focus to a student course. Please move to the variety of digital tools. Uh, so the providing, as we, we learned, uh, recorded uh, uh, lectures, um, you, can, you can repeat it and replay it, et cetera, et cetera. So to move now in presence education to the dialogue, to that what is me, uh, teaching means, interaction with the students, how many digital tools we have in methodology, in teaching methodology, in IoT, the Internet of Things, the different uh, softwares we use for teaching, for testing, through testing, or students learn a lot, et cetera, et cetera. Please define the tools. What do you have in your plan? Set the goals, as was suggested by one of the universities participating in our meeting, is very important. Why? Because what we follow uh, during institutional accreditation is the self-assessment of the institution. Uh, for the self-assessment, we provide guidelines. It's very easy to include in the guidelines the digital part, but you have to perform it. You have to show what you have done and you have to follow what do you have in your institutional development, path, development plan. So that's very important, the goals you set. That's what we evaluate, it's very, very important. And it's very important um, um, to mention that not the mob is who regulates. This is the legislative frame. And uh, in Hungary, for example, so what we want to have in a better QA for the institutions to uh, uh, introduce in Hungary the ex post program accreditation, to ease the initial program accreditation, so to have better, easier standards to follow and to evaluate what you have done in five years, six years, what you, what you have promised at the initial program accreditation, is it real? Uh, was it uh, pushed through by the university or by the higher education institutions? It's very, very important how to go with this. Um, uh, requests and guidelines, uh, yeah, they are very important, but it's very important how we do the assessment, how far we are with the evaluations given by the students. We, we know what's going on in the institutions. We are working in close co cooperation with the Hungarian Student Association, with the association of the PhD and DLA candidates. We have a rather broad and sometimes very deep view on the quality of the digitalization. It's not just the method. How do you provide the information? How transparent it is? How your web pages are organized? Uh, to make for the students uh, and even the external evaluation, evaluator to find the most important information is very important because um, uh, in this uh, information has an enormous value in the labor market and in the higher education as well. And because uh, uh, we have a special task as well, because the Hungarian Accreditation Committee was recently recognized of the, uh, by the World Federation of Medical Education. So the, we do this process as well, and it's not always in overlapping with the ESG. So we have different approaches to provide support to the universities for accreditation and uh, for getting through a student-centered teaching and learning. They are, I repeat myself 100 times, students are the prime stakeholders. Move from te uh, teacher-centered education to student-centered education. This is very important. What we are doing now, so we can use 
all the good suggestions, recommendations collected here and provided by the OECD in our evaluation uh, uh, process. But we have something higher level now, and that's the uh, Hungarian um, uh, re uh, Recovery and uh, Resilience Program where we change the landscape for program accreditation, where we work together in close cooperation with the, yes, I see, uh, 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 chair, uh, with the Hungarian Rectors Conference to get rid of the very rigid education and learning outcome uh, procedures and criteria, et cetera. There is a lot to do. Thank you very much uh, for all of your suggestions, recommendations, and uh, uh, critics. Um, uh, this is the first time we can have an impact on the legislative frame of the higher education in Hungary. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Seppi, and thank you also for understanding my signal in terms of the, the, the timekeeping. Uh, very appreciated, a very important point about also taking into account the variety of digital tools and uh, how we define and that, uh, that has uh, implications certainly for the methods to be used by the accreditation committee. So now I call on uh, Dr. Peter Levente Lacatus, Deputy Director also of MAP, uh, to complement the intervention of uh, Dr. Seppel. Please go ahead, Peter. Thank you very much. Uh, I can only agree with President Chaper and I understand uh, her problem because it's very difficult to, to summarize uh, such uh, many uh, uh, great uh, thoughts, presentations and suggestions and reflect them in a, in a short way. Uh, so I have plenty of notes, but, but I, I'll make a try uh, to, to give you it in brief. Uh, so uh, first I think, uh, and I would like to highlight that it it was an extremely useful event and just like we discussed before this kind of knowledge sharing opportunities and, and forms I think uh, these are really helpful but uh, unfortunately rare so so thank you very much OECD for for organizing this and uh, it was important to hear institutions vision and uh, delay related uh, supporting uh, solutions and just like Professor Chepa mentioned, uh, uh, quality assurance can be the strongest tool uh, to support uh, uh, the achievement of these institutional goals. And uh, in line with this, I, I think it was also important to hear about the, the working uh, group practices like, like uh, the education methodology development and, and training courses, handbooks and, and student support applications, etc. I think these are essential and, and key, key uh, areas. And I think this is uh, an extremely important to, to every institution. And um, uh, in line with this, it, it, I think it's, uh, what I have to mention that maybe I, I would have uh, heard more about the, the ESG, because uh, this is the framework uh, we are working with in the European higher education uh, area, both to the institutions and both to the agency. We, we have to work with, with these standards and guidelines and, uh, and recommendations, which we appreciate, but, but we can link them into our operation and standards only if we can link them into the each uh, standards of the ESG, like, like student centeredness, which, which is a, a key area. And, and someone mentioned that students know everything on teaching and tools. I, I basically uh, agree with that. And that's why I'm, I'm a bit disappointed because uh, Laszlo uh, cannot be here with us today. I hope next time uh, we will have at least one student or maybe more, not only the representative of the National uh, Students Union. Uh, overall, my, my impression is, is very, very positive. And I think in this project, I'm sure we'll have the opportunity to learn uh, several helpful international practices as well. And um, thank you very much again for the organization. I'm looking forward to the next steps. 
Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Lakatos. And uh, indeed, quite a quite a lot of work ahead, and also in the context of the, the ESG. Uh, so now we move to the to the perspectives uh, from the ministry itself. Um, so uh, I would like to give the floor to Dr. Uh, Gabor Mesaros, senior counselor at the Higher Education uh, Training Department uh, within the Ministry uh, for Innovation and Technology. Dr. Gabor, please go ahead. Well, thank you, Chair. First of all, congratulations for this National Roundtable. It is a great job and very uh, useful and informative opportunity for us. Uh, in order to avoid the raised hand of the chair, I will keep my uh, speech brief. Uh, two points, one of for legislation. When the COVID pandemic hit the Europe and Hungary, uh, from one day to the next, we needed to move to the uh, on-campus training to an online training. And in a firefighter mode, we checked out whether the legislation is in line with the new reality. Uh, we haven't found many uh, loopholes in the legislation. International students needed visas, even if they went to online courses. Uh, students needed to show in person their qualifications. Uh, but th there was minor and again, firefighters uh, legislation. What we plan to do is to be more proactive and support and uh, encourage universities to use digital solutions. Having said that, my second point is uh, what was actually uh, raised by the last panel that perhaps, and it is a social dimension of digitalization, shouldn't, shouldn't take digitalization knowledge for granted. We should see the challenges as well. If you have the hardware, the software and the digital literacy, in other words, if you are already young, smart and rich, then digitalization will make you even smarter and richer and who can tell the future, maybe even younger. But if you are less privileged, if you are not a digital native, then might be out of luck and digitalization could enhance social differences. The COVID pandemic was obviously not what we were dreaming about, but still it clearly gave us a big push towards uh, digitalization. I, I think we should all size this opportunity but also we should tackle the social challenges it brings. But thank you. Thank you very much, um, <clears throat> Dr. Mesarius. Uh, indeed, uh, it's, it's an opportunity that comes with the pandemic, but it, it, it really does introduce a new dimension on equity in higher education, uh, the digital dimension. Uh, and now to conclude this uh, series of perspectives, I'd like to invite Dr. Zoltan Dobeksi, and Secretary General of the Hungarian Rectors Conference. Uh, so please, Dr. Zoltan, please go ahead. Thank you, um, Chair. And um, I'd like to um, highlight some um, thoughts and um, some um, um, <clears throat> um, comments uh, about the conference. It was a very fruitful and very interesting conference. I learned a lot. Uh, it was mentioned that, the, of course, digital transformation is going on, and it's going on in the framework of uh, uh, a new uh, sectoral uh, modernization project, a program which we just started a few weeks ago together with the accreditation committee, with the ministry at the education authority. Um, I'd like to highlight that um, uh, Digitalization is an opportunity, it's an advantage, but it can be also some risks, dangers, and uh, challenges. So we have to consider these, not uh, just the advantages. Um, uh, we experienced that during the last uh, two years, two and a half years, the digitalization was a tool to survive, to continue education during the pandemic and during war. Uh, if we consider uh, that the next decade or few decades will be more dangerous than the last 50 years was, uh, we have to consider this, that this is a very important tool to continue education and to survive and to maintain education for all. Um, about diversity. We also have to consider 
that our universities and colleges in Hungary, uh, we have 64 altogether, are very diverse. So our approach uh, in the field of digitalization and digital education have to be uh, also diverse. And also students and, uh, and scholars, professors, approach to digitalization is also very, very diverse. I'd like to mention some uh, uh, prerequisites what I uh, learned today uh, uh, for quality uh, to maintain or improve the quality of digital education. Uh, the digit, it's very important to the digital content and the digital curriculum and the human resources needed to develop it. So we need adequate human resources to develop the digital content and the digital curriculum itself. Uh, the quality assurance of digital contents and the, the digital curriculum is also very in, in, important and the, and the procedures uh, we talked about. Uh, it's very important the methodology, how we are, how we use digital contents and the curriculum itself. Uh, I think it needs to be organized centrally or coordinated centrally. Uh, so we need trainings uh, to learn more about the methodology. And I'd like to highlight that this is one of the, of the um, prerequisites, what the director's conference can uh, uh, provide, so organize trainings and conferences about uh, uh, these issues. Um, uh, the next thing what, what I want to, to mention is the, uh, it's very important to share the, the knowledge, the shared and the digital contents among the universities and to um, find a way how we coordinate it and the procedures itself. And also the Rector's Conference uh, uh, is a good platform to, uh, to provide opportunity how uh, to share the digital contents and, uh, among uh, universities. And it's also need to be organized and centrally coordinated. And finally, I like to mention that the educational management, the management of the universities, uh, of the management of the institutions. If uh, we are using digital tools, more data, we are using more data, more digital tools. And if uh, we uh, use, uh, uh, if our uh, approach with using these tools will be most service oriented, uh, our expectation is that our decisions and the management of the universities and the management of the, of, uh, the education itself would be more uh, effective. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Dubeski. It's uh, certainly a, a, an important point, the fact that this uh, digital education is certainly an area which can benefit from shared knowledge across, across institutions. And this is one of the objectives indeed of this National Roundtable. So I would like to thank the, the, the perspectives of all panelists in this uh, final panel. And there's certainly a lot of homework for all of them uh, within this area in Hungary. And we wish you also good luck and will accompany you at least uh, in, within, uh, at this stage in, in, this, um, in this endeavor. Uh, so now um, I would like to uh, go to the closing uh, uh, next steps uh, session uh, very much before uh, I give uh, the floor uh, to Dr. Uh, Laura from the Ministry. I would like just to thank also on behalf of the OECD uh, all the participants, the active participation of everybody in this national roundtable, uh, the collaboration with the Ministry of Education in, or in, in organizing the Ministry of Innovation, in organizing um, this um, national roundtable and also the collaboration with the European Commission. Special word also for uh, my colleagues, in particular François, uh, for uh, being the mastermind of the whole national roundtable. So now uh, for closing, I would like to um, give the floor to Dr. Laura Sinoros Zabo, Head of the Department for Strategy and Institutional Development from the Hungarian Ministry for Innovation and Technology. Uh, so Dr. Laura, you have the floor 
uh, to close the meeting. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. And I would like to thank everybody for taking part in today's National Roundtable. Uh, the topic, the digitalization of higher education in Hungary, uh, and this um, roundtable um, gave me a lot of new perspectives on the topic itself. So what is digitalization? I heard that it can be considered as a tool or as an opportunity, but I believe that it's a must. And because uh, all jobs uh, will require some level of digital skills and knowledge. So I believe that higher education cannot uh, uh, omit this uh, uh, responsibility. Uh, as we heard at the beginning, the Hungarian higher education operates in a new structure with an increased funding system and uh, all this is happening to enhance performance in higher education in Hungary. We would like to achieve a better quality in education, in operation, in uh, students' experience and performance. And uh, one tool of uh, achieving better quality is a better QA system and a better accreditation system. Uh, President Chipa mentioned that uh, she really hopes to get some practical knowledge from our consultation today. So uh, I heard a lot of uh, good piece of advice. OECD had interviews and sat with it. And today's roundtable also um, gave us uh, best practices from Hungarian higher education. So what I learned today that um, um, higher education institutions uh, use clear communication on their strategies and how to enhance uh, digital higher education, but also how to, at the beginning of the COVID-19 pandemic, how to quickly shift, shift to digital education. And it's also important to have a good monitoring system and support system for digital education. And then we need to assess, we need to assess the needs of the different actors in digital education and also the competencies of all these actors. We need a good uh, mentoring system, which provides the necessary skills. And um, we need stakeholder cooperation, conferences and roundtables like this today. Um, it was also interesting to listen to the different approaches, how we can, how we can get to, to the topic to enhance the digital higher education. So, um, I understood that we need methodological renewal of teaching and learning, and we need a training on the use of the digital tools. Uh, we need um, to use the potentials of learning analytics, and we always have to keep an eye on the labor market skills needs. Uh, we need a new concept for all this, uh, and in the focus of this new concept is the student and how, how he feels in this uh, uh, new uh, environment. So uh, we get expert support from OECD uh, on how to enhance quality in digital higher education. And OECD will come up with recommendations for the MOB, for higher education institutions, and also for the policy field. So I already understood that from the policy field side, I have to think about how will I communicate on the new quality requirements of digital education. How will I monitor uh, the achievements and how will I provide a support system for all actors? How will I assess the needs and the competencies and uh, what kind of uh, mentoring I will provide and how will I involve stakeholders into this uh, work? So uh, I would like to invite you to the next steps of this uh, international project, which will be an international conference and another round of expert roundtable. And um, as it was mentioned, uh, this um, roundtable is uh, being recorded, so it will be shared on the Higher Education Policy Field YouTube channel. So uh, this way, I hope that uh, everybody will have the time and opportunity to contribute on the topic. So I would like to thank everybody again for taking part in this very valuable and very uh, interesting conversations. Thank you. Thank you very much and bye-bye. Um, until next time, which will be the introduction.